Good morning, everyone. Kerasoft Technology would like to welcome you to our ServiceNow webinar, Modernizing Customer Experience in the Federal Government. At this time, I'd like to hand the floor over to our speakers, Kevin and Eduardo. The floor is all yours. Well, thanks so much. Uh, let me know if you cannot hear me and um, appreciate the introduction. My name is uh, Kevin Adler, and I'm part of the ServiceNow public sector team based out of the um, our, uh, Vienna, Virginia Office of ServiceNow. And um, Eduardo and I support uh, the federal sector, uh, specifically the uh, Army, uh, US Army. And we're pleased to have the opportunity to walk through uh, this conversation today around the uh, evolution of customer, uh, federal customer experience um, in, in the federal government. So with that, uh, the agenda that we'll cover today, <clears throat> we'll walk through uh, what we see in the news today and what we hear from um, customers and partners and, and, the, and the government will talk about the White House executive order uh, to elevate the experience for customer service in the federal sector. We'll go over, um, Heather and her team did a great job with a uh, citizen satisfaction report from Kerasoft. We'll go over the highlights from that as well and make that available for further discussions. We'll talk about specifically ServiceNow's interest in making it simpler for agencies of all sizes, from state and local to uh, federal civilian to federal DOD, for agencies of all sizes to deliver an increase or a quicker value to market for their experiences with their citizens, mission partners, stakeholders, consumers, whoever they're serving uh, through a new offering called Public Sector Digital Services. It's gotten a lot of attention out there. We'll spend some more time dissecting that and explaining the value proposition behind public sector digital services from ServiceNow. And then finally, Eduardo will walk through a magnificent demo showing the value of public sector digital services within this webinar today. Our goal is to inspire and ignite conversations. So throughout the presentation, um, I think Heather's gonna be managing the chat which all of you have access to, or the Q&A panel. You're welcome to toss in your questions there. Um, we will probably collect them at the end of the presentation and go through them together as it makes sense to, um, to not interrupt the, the show flow. After this though, Eduardo and I are available with the rest of the folks from Kerasoft and ServiceNow to answer additional questions that you have or to explore the use cases in your own environment that we might be able to, to solve together. Um, together. So with that, I, obviously this is a public facing webinar. I wanna walk through the safe harbor notice for forward looking statements. And then we'll start the conversation really around what we're seeing in the news today. We, uh, you can just flip on the TV, you can open up the newspaper or digital news and you see stories that around the government making inroads into providing a better experience for citizens and customers. Um, this is equivalent to what we all see in our private lives when we're you know, firing up our, our, our browser on our laptop or on your handheld device mostly and ordering a pizza from Domino's, how easy is that? Or how easy it is to order something off of uh, from Uber or from Amazon. So giving that frictionless experience is the goal. And we see a lot of agencies having success or lack of success in this scenario with dropping the ball. And that's really the emphasis for today's webinar is to empower uh, agencies to do a really good job and to focus on achieving the goal of improving the experience that they deliver to their customers, regardless if they're citizens, taxpayers, mission partners, et cetera, or, other, or even other agencies. And that's really the goal. So when, we, when Eduardo and I speak to different customers in the federal sector, we always we always like to start off with a, a broad scale you know, conversation. What if the federal government were more like American Express? We all have, my, many of us have experience with American Express being that white glove service delivery experience with whatever your challenge is, not only integrating and using American Express, but looking at their web portal for getting answers to questions or problems is crazy simple. And I can search a keyword or topic right in that search gazetteer. I can look at their digital service catalog. I can actually do a live chat with them when it's available, or I can contact them through a telephone number if I should choose. 
And that's a really good uh, North Star goal or experience for a lot of our customers who are trying to modernize the experience they're delivering uh, to their users out there in the world and also capturing internally amongst their employees. Um, we do know of the, the silver tsunami, which is folks in the federal government who are getting up there and nearing the retirement age and the ability for them to pass on all that knowledge to the new workers that are coming in and those new, uh, new set of workers that are becoming public sector servants are so accustomed to using tools on their phones, on their tablets, making it simple. Having an, uh, an, or, uh, having an approach of you know, customer service first approach delivers a really good experience, not only to your customers, but to your employees, your staff, your, your community of users who are supporting those customers. And another example that we always like to have as a North Star, which I'm sure many of us on the phone can relate to, is what if the federal government were more like Amazon? What if you had one portal and look, you can log in and it's personalized. It says in the top right corner, hello, Scott. And my experience with Amazon is very different from Heather's experience with Amazon because her orders are her orders and my orders are mine. So I can look at my payment history. I can look at my recent orders, my lists, my favorites, et cetera. And it's a, it's a cultivated experience around me or in this scenario around Scott. And that's where ServiceNow is able to elevate that experience delivered to each citizen, to each customer that that agency uh, engages with through our tool set. And that's really the ability to define the vision uh, for, for federal agencies in, in, the, in the federal government space. At this point, I'm going to open up with a quick video to articulate the value proposition and the goal for many different customers. So, Heather, as I move forward to the video, if you can't hear it, give me a give me a, a shout. But I can't. I'm not sharing the sound. But I should I should be. Let's take a look. The president's management agenda recognizes that Americans expect consumer-like experiences from government. Simple, intuitive, and on demand. Agencies are making progress, but there's more work to do. The customer experience transcends single interactions. Positive experiences that build trust really matter when navigating certain life events, often across multiple agencies. A presidential executive order advocates harnessing technology to improve service delivery. What holds back progress? Legacy systems, manual processes, and siloed information. Customer service management from ServiceNow integrates front, middle, and back-end operations in a cloud-based platform. Self-service offerings and omni-channel communications for government contact centers enable exceptional customer service experiences for those that the agency supports. And ServiceNow's automation, machine learning, and predictive analytics help leaders prioritize, scale responses, and enhance efficiency. Get in touch for a test drive and examples of customer service success. So that video was a video was a, a quick vignette of the value proposition that ServiceNow can offer to agencies. And I see in the chat that some folks aren't able to see the video and we will absolutely share this with the follow-up resources so you can watch this on your own device at your own leisure. So as we move forward with the presentation, we take a look at that uh, directives in, uh, in government CX and we look at the, uh, the ability to support that mission from the White House all the way down to your central CIO office. And really the, um, the government has really given that executive order for transforming that experience delivered to rebuild trust in government. There's um, presidential actions from you know, last fall that the White House launched. They not only focus on all of these high impact service providers, many of them you'll see on the screen here are civilian accounts, but really in enabling or encouraging all agencies, regardless of size, scale, or focus, uh, to improve the delivery it serves to its constituencies. And that's really the president's management objective, uh, agenda. And there's really three core priorities with that agenda. Um, the ability then for the federal workforce, uh, the commitment to ensure that the workforce is strong, empowered, and well-equipped 
I mentioned earlier, those coming into the workforce, having good tools to do their job, the ability for that experience for the customers to be improved, much like we see when uh, private citizens at night are engaging with Amazon or American Express or Uber, and having that information be seamlessly available to all Americans, uh, regardless of where they're logging in from or what device they're, they're seeing. And then finally, improving the speed of government business, how the government itself manages business to systematically improve that ability to track and manage engagements and resolve issues faster to achieve the missions uh, quicker. So with that, let's take a moment and look at that citizen experience and satisfaction report that I mentioned um, earlier. This is available uh, from the Carasoft website. I'm gonna highlight it for everyone here. And then of course, at the end, we'll have a pointer to it so you can dissect more information. Um, they performed this, uh, Carasoft performed this survey for, with more than 2000 Americans to assess opinions of their federal government engagement experiences. And I've got such the highlights here that uh, really the ability for the agencies to deliver um, uh, what the citizens want. So 73% of users out there prefer self-service. Um, conversely, 27% prefer to speak with an agent or someone by telephone. And I look at that and I, I, I think of how I prefer to engage. It really depends on the issue I'm trying to resolve. If I want to pick up the phone and dial an agency to get information on a licensing permit or something with, uh, that has to do with uh, benefits, that might be more relevant for a phone conversation versus self-service. The ability for that agency to support an omni-channel, however I wish to engage, increases the speed at which my phone call gets answered because there's fewer people in front of me on the queue to get their telephone call answered because that agency offers omni-channel, multi-channel engagement. So all of those customers in front of me or alongside of me that wish to do self-service have that option to execute with self-service. So that's a, that's a good goal, a good North Star. And we, we see that in the marketplace today. But you know, customers are expecting more improvements. Uh, of those 2,000 interviewed, 39% uh, percent said that they have not seen an improvement in their experience when engaging with the federal government since the onset of the pandemic. And 53% of those interviewed reported that their experience has been about the same. So I think what we're, what we're gathering here is there is a great an area for improvement for, for these agencies to improve their delivery of, of service. Uh, feedback is part of what is expected. Uh, almost 80% said that they were somewhat or very likely to provide feedback to that agency that they had a poor experience. And then 76% said that they were likely to tell or share their feedback socially or tell their friends and family about that poor experience. So the goal is that if you give a good, good, good feedback or good opportunity for delivery of service to, to citizens, you're going to be um, elevated in your social engagement channel and you'll stay out of the negative viewpoint or negative sentiment from that uh, customer that, that received a, a, a lackluster experience. And then finally, digital is the future. As we know, all of us are, are trying to, to deal with either working from home or using more screen time or even attending this Zoom call. 40% um, of those interviewed responded that their, their wait times um, reported that wait times over five minutes went on the phone. 39% have experienced slower than normal mail delivery. Uh, and we know that 33% reported that information was difficult to find on federal websites. I go back to those experiences that I showed you earlier, where you have the ability to use natural language and search for answers from that agency's website. Obviously, they're the source of information. But much like we do in our private lives using Google or Bing or Yahoo Search, what if it was that easy to engage with the IRS or to engage with the US Army or engage with any agency of any size through a search gazetteer that popped up the answers to your questions? That would be a really good ability for these, these agencies to deliver. And when we pulled out a few of the quotes, you know, Larry from St. Louis said, if he could do 99% of his banking on a mobile app he should be able to view his taxes, file them, and apply to USA Jobs 
or any other government need with that same ease of use. So again, these are some expectations that citizens have of the increased um, uh, opportunities for the agencies to deliver better service from Larry and San Antonio. The last one I'll share with Rebecca out of San Antonio. She talks about the websites that I've interacted with seem to be running on old software and they're not user friendly. I think this paints a picture of the opportunity for all of the agencies that we either uh, go to as citizens or work with in our industries or support to improve the speed of responsiveness for that website and that experience. So with that, one of the goals that ServiceNow can deliver for increasing the simplicity of those websites and the usability is what we call public sector digital services. These are a collection of industry product uh, capabilities that enable US governments of all sizes to resolve constituent issues quicker. And we know that time is of the essence. So with that, we'll talk basically about the ability for the platform to modernize the delivery of these services to the users. PSDS or public sector digital services are a packaged data models to deliver constituent services to the variety of users out there. That means you can segregate the users and restrict information or enable information based upon who that user is. The constituent experience is tailored to that government product or service being uh, requested. The ability not only for the, con the constituent to request service information, but for the worker to deliver information. So the, we have a configurable workspace tailored to these agents or analysts that are serving the constituents. And that's going to provide much more uh, success for those new agents when they come on board and they learn the new tools with their job of delivering service to the, to the requesters. And finally, every keystroke, every click, every um, piece of data that's put into public sector digital services, you can report on. So you can find out through our uh, data analytics, you can find out all things of how many users are asking for information, how many of those users asking information are finding it, or my favorite is how many users are asking for things that we don't even have answers for. The exceptions report, I think, is such an interesting conversation to look at the keystrokes and the search criteria that aren't being addressed so that the agency knows exactly where their users are driving or seeking information, and the agency can then be creative in responding to those through a self-service search gazetteer. And again, Eduardo is gonna show this to you in a few minutes. And then finally, this is all really packaging up these workflows for government services, delivering them in an either impact level four cloud, impact level five cloud, delivering them. Some agencies need to run this on premises that's supported in ServiceNow, but delivering these to the agency so that from an IT and a security boundary perspective, it's in there and you get that check mark and you can move forward and improve the service delivered to your users through public sector digital services from ServiceNow. Let's take a quick look at some of these uh, innovative services that we're talking about here. I mentioned the government data model. This is essentially an out of the box um, data model for how agencies will handle their constituents, their members of households, the relationships of those members of households. That will speed up the service delivery and require less tailored approach as, as the, from the implementation perspective. This will help to define and structure services offered to certain members of those households or however you utilize the data models, but that will help you to deliver uh, best in class service to those users. And that is all defined by your business requirements so that you'll be able to serve um, tall people, short people, uh, red-haired customers, bald customers, blonde customers, brunette customers, however you define your audience of users, those data models will adhere to those structured models and ensure that the information is available to those that you want it to be available to. Next, we make it easy for constituents to request service. This is an, uh, a demonstration, much like you'll see with Eduardo in a few minutes. But this portal is responsive, so it will actually look and feel however the business requirements demand it look and feel. This is an example of, a, of an out-of-the-box demo that it's pre-wired to recognize that government foundation. And you'll be able to allow constituents to use the portal to access a variety of catalog, digital catalog, we 
products and services, however you define them, that can be tailored to that user through the data model. And that speeds the way the deployment of this entire solution through to rent to, um, because you're, you're building less and just deploying more, you're configuring what's already out of the box. And that's a huge value proposition for many of our agencies. At the end of the day, your, your users can use the virtual chat bot that you see the icon for in the bottom right of the screen. That, um, that can be a variety of ways for users, even on their mobile device, to fire up an, uh, a question or a live chat. Or as we see in this example, Diane Smith from the top right of the screen, she can fire up on her handheld device, a live chat and update the status or check the status of her case that she opened with the state of new Palisades. So that's a really good example of what the value of a portal from public sector digital services. Next, let's look at what the worker bees are gonna look like. So the agents or the analysts who are going to deliver service to the constituents, they've got a clean user interface. This can be tailored to support uh, engagements with systems of record, but the ability for that agent to view and manage constituent profile, household services received, and in, um, entitled to all from one easy to use interface is brilliant. The ability for that analyst to create cases, to create cases on behalf of others via the telephone, uh, live chat or other, even social. A lot of agencies use Facebook, even social is supported. And that's gonna allow these analysts or these agents to serve the constituents through a consistent look and feel and uh, deliver uh, speed uh, with, with less time. Because remember, time is of the essence. And then finally, I talked about performance analytics. Everything there is tracked, everything is measured so that senior leadership can report out. Obviously, ServiceNow wants to demonstrate value, but service uh, senior leadership wants to also demonstrate value received from the software and the tool and how many users are being supported and how many need support and what's my average time to answer or my resolution time or where do I need to focus on? What are the roadblocks for uh, preventing my team from delivering better service? These um, analytics reports out of the box deliver managers the insight into the delivery of those goals. And this is part of that um, public sector digital services tool set that allows managers to access dashboards that are native uh, and, and uh, to the system. And then finally, as needs evolve, um, so, does, so does the platform. The platform is a low code, no code platform. The ability to uh, create new uh, workflows to support that. Obviously your business needs grow and so does ServiceNow. The ability to take advantage of the flexible uh, report writers or the ability to add new workflows I tell you, we solve one problem for one customer and that customer more times than not comes forward with other problems to throw at the system that's already in place. And so that's the value of the ability to deploy new service workflows with public sector digital services. So with that, I've got one customer success story um, that I'm gonna share with you folks today. And then we're gonna hop over and watch Eduardo's demonstration. So with that, We've got a civilian account that I'll highlight. And this is a live example. You can actually go to Fish and Wildlife Service today. As an end user, you probably don't know it's service now on the back end, and that really is irrelevant. What's relevant is that Fish and Wildlife is able to deploy this quickly and rapidly to their different segments of customers using a very easy to use familiar interface, again, it's not rocket science, how to explore and find that permit you need. You just start clicking and searching. It's not rocket science to open up uh, a case to get help or even to utilize self-service and reply for that, apply for that permit yourself. And that's the value that Fish and Wildlife is seeing is that they can deflect more calls, obviously lower costs and speed, the delivery of service and elevate the experience they give to the users while lowering costs of staff who need to focus on higher level activities than that zero level or that tier one help desk for where do I find a fishing license or a hunting license. So this is a really good experience and I always love to invite customers, obviously when I'm done the presentation, to go on to Fish and Wildlife's website and just experience it yourself because they are a great example of a customer that's deployed in, in, a, in an environment that's in production 
uh, a federal government that's in production with, uh, with customer service uh, success from, from ServiceNow. So with that, uh, I'm gonna swing over the microphone. Eduardo, you are welcome to take the microphone and walk us through an eloquent demonstration. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, th thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, and uh, before I jump into, into the demo here, I just wanted to, to cover just at a high level a few uh, key uh, items about this new uh, solution that, that ServiceNow um, is, has delivered for, for the public sector. So as Kevin uh, was mentioning, I mean, the, the goal is to make uh, the, the, the user, the, the constituent experience, uh, make it more modern, make it easy, and also make it very uh, simple for, for um, all, all agencies and, and organizations to deploy this, this experience. So what uh, our product team has done is uh, leverage uh, all of the, some of the existing uh, data models that we already have with, with our, our, our platform and extend that uh, with uh, data, with, with key functionality that's, uh, that's needed uh, within the government. So government agencies, the DOD uh, agencies, they have specific needs to support their, their citizens, their constituents and all their mission partners. Uh, so we've leveraged our platform and extended it to make it very simple for users to start uh, providing services to all their, their users and to make it uh, easy for them to, to get service from, from your organization. So uh, from that uh, data model uh, foundation, you can build um, all sorts of uh, services and request types that, that you can uh, provide to specific uh, user groups or, or specific uh, customers that, that you have that, that you need to support. And each one of those request types, I mean, you, you can leverage our local, no-code tools to, to build, uh, to create uh, custom uh, request types and, uh, and still using, while, while you're using that, that shared uh, foundation, make it simple, make it, do it, do it very quickly and, and reduce their development time to weeks instead of months or, or even years. So all of that uh, both for both the, the operations layer, so all your, your back-end operations, um, your, your middle office uh, workers, and, and also from the, from the front end, from the engagement layer. So all of that, that data, those data models are available and, uh, and can support uh, all those, those different use cases where uh, users need to support uh, like need to interact with, with partners and, and the government and also uh, sometimes uh, need, need to support uh, each other. And, uh, and so as part of the solution, we're building the, this foundation, we're supporting uh, as we did with like fish and, fish and wildlife, initially some, some common use cases for like licensing and permits, FOIA and, and others, but uh, this uh, allows you to, to create your own. So the idea is that you can build your own uh, service types, uh, expand uh, upon this foundation and still uh, get get in new services, get uh, new, new sites um, running running quickly. So let me switch here uh, to one of the our sample portals today. So for the, this sample demo today, uh, what we're gonna use is just a, a FOIA request. So FOIA can be one of the service types that you can deliver to all your, your customers. And, uh, and, and as part of this, uh, this portal here, so based on the, the users who are gonna be submitting FOIA requests and who are gonna be fulfilling, responding to this FOIA request, that, that share a data model allows you to control like who can see what information, if it's sensitive information, if it has sensitive data as part of those requests, you can easily restrict access to the data so only certain sets of users can see it, uh, only a person requesting can see what, what they're requesting and only uh, people who need to see the data are able to see the data, so all of that, makes it uh, easier for you to, to control uh, all the, your data security, data visibility, uh, and, and you don't have to spend a lot of time writing custom uh, codes or, or, or controls to, to define who, who can access and, and view uh, the data on your, both on your uh, engagement layer on the portal and also from a backend perspective for, from all your, your service case workers who are responding to all, all of those requests. And, uh, and so here, uh, I'm just gonna submit a quick uh, request. So here within a part of this portal, uh, I can have a, a knowledge base so I can have uh, help uh, to help users understand how to submit the request, how to uh, full, complete, uh, what type of information is needed and what type of requests they, they can submit. They can also see uh, things like their notifications. So if they already provided, uh, submitted some requests or requested a, a service, 
they can see what's the status of that, that service and what uh, if any any additional information is needed. And uh, and, and here uh, you can enable uh, any number of requests uh, within this portal. So we have what we call here a, a service catalog where you can define all the different request types and services that your organization wants to provide. And a user can, uh, depending on their, their access level or their code, they'll have uh, the ability to submit those, those requests via the portal uh, in, a, in a very quick uh, way. So here, uh, I'm just gonna show you a simple FOIA request. So all of those uh, different request types can be completely configurable. So you can uh, capture any data that, that, that's needed uh, as part of those requests and, and have uh, it completely customized based on your, your use case and, and the type of uh, data that, that you're trying to, trying to capture. So here, as I walk through this, this FOIA request, I can def define who is uh, who is requesting this information. It can be an individual business or, or another agency. And also uh, I can request it on behalf of myself. Um, I'm logged in as Samantha, or uh, I could request it on behalf of someone else within my, my organization or, or within my, my household. And then as I walk through this request here, I can capture uh, in all, um, any type of data that, that you need in order to fulfill that request. So it can be some of the, the, the purpose of the request. I can add a description of the type, types of documents, the types of information I need for the FOIA request. Uh, if there is a, a fee associated with it, uh, I can capture that, that information and, and provide that information to the user as well. And then uh, any other details on, on how quickly I need this request. And, and even if I need to submit attachments, I can do that as well from, from this form. And once I submit this request, this is going to create uh, a new request ID that uh, can be routed to the, the specific group based on the type of information that's requested, who's requesting it, and, and the priority. So it's going to look for the best available um, agent uh, who's who can answer this request quickly and send that directly to him so that you're not going to spend time trying to route that request, trying to de define who uh, needs to answer uh, this request, and, and, and so on. So uh, Samantha can be notified via email. So anytime there's an update to the, her, her request, she'll get a, a notification and she can always go back here to this portal and see where, where her request is, what's the status and, and what's, what's been done to it. Now I'm gonna switch here to the, this is actually the, the, the backend view for, the, for the, the, the agent who's gonna be fulfilling those requests. So, as part of this, uh, this work, we call it a, or, or the, the Asian workspace, uh, I can see a list of all the different uh, request types that I can reply to. So not only I could have FOIA requests, I could have uh, a unlimited number of different request types for all the different services that, that my organization provides. And, uh, and those request types can be assigned uh, directly to, to me, right? So once a request comes in, if I'm, uh, I still have bandwidth, uh, I still have availability to work on those requests, they can be assigned to, to an agent uh, who can work on those requests. And then I can go here and quickly see a, a list of all the requests that are still pending that I need to take some action and, and do some work on, on it. So as I, as I open up one of those requests here, as part of each request, uh, you can associate a process flow to it. And we call this a, a playbook. But essentially, it's a it's a step by step guide um, to that that helps me walk through the process on what needs to be done uh, as part of any any request type, and and this can be really helpful, especially for for newer agents or, or perhaps like users who are not as familiar with a, with a certain procedure or a certain uh, process. Uh, this helps them understand exactly what's been done to this request, uh, what, what what stage it's at and what, uh, what needs to happen next. You can see all the, the relevant data that I need, I need to review. And once I've done that review, I can just mark this as complete and then move on to the next uh, stage in the, in the process. And then uh, if there's uh, clarifications needed, if I need to ask uh, additional questions from the, the user who submitted this request, I can type it directly here uh, on this interface and that can trigger an email, send a notification to the user asking them for to submit additional documents or, or, or anything you, you need in order to fulfill this request. So all of this uh, helps you do all your work from one place instead of having to flip back and forth 
between uh, one application and Outlook and uh, or even a uh, phone, uh, I can cap send, uh, capture all the data here and, and walk through the process and keep track of where, where I am in the process. And all those steps here are, are completely configurable. You can define as many steps as you want. And th that can help you automate your process as well. Because as part of some of those steps, I can automatically create tasks that needs to be um, performed as part of this request. So if someone needs to do some research to look up documentation, to look up data, they can, uh, we can automate, help uh, create those tasks, assign those tasks, and even like send communications out uh, as needed. So that reduces uh, all sorts of manual processing as part of a, as part of a request. And, uh, and as part of this workspace too, so uh, the goal of the, this workspace is really to, to make the, the, your case worker, your agent's job easier. We also can show display here on, on the right side, a, a list of all the, the related results that may help them solve this, uh, this request, right? So you, you could have uh, knowledge articles that, are, uh, that may be helpful that to, in case they're not, they need some, some additional information on, on what to do. Uh, and even like perhaps like some, some other similar cases, similar requests that, that have been resolved that, that may help uh, the agent uh, with uh, answering this, uh, this request as well. So here uh, you can configure this display of uh, all of that information. And that's uh, based on the, the, the question being asked is gonna show you different, different data uh, on, on this section here. Um, and, and then finally, one, one of the things that I just wanted to highlight here is that as part of this application too, uh, you can have a full view of the, the person submitting the request. So if you're trying to, to understand who they are, uh, what types of previous requests that they've submitted and uh, what other interactions you've had with this user, uh, you, I can quickly view here what, uh, how many cases, how many requests Samantha has submitted, uh, which ones were the, the recent ones, uh, what types of services that, that she's, uh, she has received, and all of that can be displayed in just one, one tab here. So I can quickly understand how I can help her uh, fulfill the request. She submitted similar requests in the past and, and hopefully reduce the, the response time for all, all of the, um, the, the services that, that you provide. And finally here, I wanted to show, just uh, give you a quick uh, overview of some of the metrics that are available with our application. So as Kevin uh, mentioned before, we have hundreds of different uh, reports and dashboards that, that come uh, with our solution. And you can build, uh, create your own as well. But this is just a sample dashboard that uh, it can be used to understand your, your volume, how many cases you have. Uh, you can look at trend metrics you, uh, and, and also look at things like time to resolution and how long those cases tend to, tend to stay open. So all of that can help you really understand what are some, some of the bottlenecks in your, in your system, which, uh, which areas uh, there could be like some improvement opportunities to reduce the, the overall time that it takes you to respond to those requests and, and improve the services you, you provide. And, uh, and all of this here, as I said, I mean, you can, you can configure it, or you can um, build those reports to the, the display the metrics that, that you need for, for your team and for your leadership. So all of those uh, reports, they can, we can filter the metrics to display just for, for a specific team. So if you're a, a team manager or supervisor, you can look at the data just for, for your own group versus the leadership that, that who's gonna look at this from a higher level and, and see it for, for their entire organization. So um, as I said that, I mean, yeah, all of those different uh, tabs here can, can have different reports, different metrics, uh, and even we can do things like forecasting and, and, and trend analysis to try to figure out what, uh, what volumes, what kind of, um, how many requests we expect to get in the future based on, on, on the historical data. You said that uh, that's uh, that concludes the, the demo for today. Uh, so I'm going to switch back here to, to Kevin, and then uh, we can. If there's any any questions in the chat as well that, that we can we can respond uh, help answer. Sounds good, Eduardo. Thank you so much for the eloquent uh, demonstration. We appreciate the opportunity to share more about ServiceNow's 
public sector digital services and the effort to modernize customer experience in the federal government. Uh, my name is Kevin Adler, Eduardo and I, uh, we've got our email in the bottom left of the screen. You should be able to see that. But um, Heather, if there's questions, we'll be happy to entertain them. Yep, we did get a few questions during that. So we did have one question. Um, do ISSOs have any resistance to external facing site exposure? And what is the response to them? Uh, so so our, our platform, I mean, we have um, different security levels that are available. So we have um, an IL-4 environment, IL-5 environment, also like on the, on, the, on the DOD side and also on the federal side, we have a fed ramp moderate and high environments. So depending on, on who you're, you're supporting, uh, what types of users need to access, uh, we, we can help you select the, the appropriate uh, secure uh, environment and all of those different clouds and environments are all just uh, government specific. So they're not shared with our commercial side. They're just, uh, we have a, a government community cloud that's used only by, by government customers. Um, and we also offer the, the option to, to run our application on premise as well, if, if you need to have a, a secure environment. Great, we got another question in the Q&A pod. Is this pub public sector part of the CSM? Yes, so this, uh, the, the public sector uh, product, uh, yeah, it's an extension of CSM. So it was built uh, using the, the core CSM functionality. We just extended that and, and built um, additional government specific services and, and data structures to, to help um, speed up the, the development for our, our government customers. Someone else asked, can PSDS run on premises? Yes, uh, yeah, I, th I think I answered that. Yes, we, we can, we have a, an option to run on premise or, or in, a, in a government cloud. Mm -hmm. so Tracy just asked, is there a two way sync between low and high sides with ServiceNow if you have instances on both sides? Uh, it, it, it's, it, it can be done, but, uh, it's, yeah, I think that that's, and, and Tracy, we probably, probably, we can talk with you offline. Uh, we need to, to look at that on a case by case basis, just because of the, the sensitivity of the data or, and how, um, you need to be careful, especially, I mean, from the low to the high side, we typically, we can do that the other way, um, uh, I'm not sure if we're allowed to, to do that, but we can we can look at your, be happy to look at your use case and try to see if we can come up with a, a solution. And then Jason asked, do you know of any agencies using CSM for managing media inquiries or in the DOD sense, the PAO? Uh, yeah, I, I can take that one. So yeah, Jason, there are agencies uh, civilian and um, CSM can support any type of inquiry. So specifically for media inquiries, yes. Uh, public affairs, yes. Those are great use cases for public sector digital services and the types of solutions that Eduardo demonstrated for you today. And then John asked, how is the data living inside of ServiceNow backed up? Yeah, so, so that's all part of our, our, our cloud infrastructure. So as part of a, like our cloud services, we have um, a backup uh, and backup plans that, that uh, and we can share you some of the details on, on exactly how, how often and, and how, how that works, but that's all part of that, that, that government cloud uh, infrastructure that, that we support. I think we have emptied all of the chat, but there is one in the Q&A pod. Um, they ask, where I work, we require an impact level five cloud environment. Is there an option for that? Yeah, um, part of the value of ServiceNow, the answer is yes. Uh, we can deliver, ServiceNow can deliver an instance in an impact level five uh, cloud environment. Uh, we can do that uh, natively through our government community cloud. 
And we can also support that if you have an existing IL-5 environment, maybe in Amazon or maybe in, in Azure, we can support that as well. So yes, you're covered. Uh, thank you all again and have a great day.